Look at Shimon. You hear that? Yeah. yeah. There we go. Now we got it going. This program is live. We might swear, but we're hoping it's intended for all audiences. Here we go, baby. Right here, Brian Erlacher, the 28th Hall of Famer in Chicago Bears history, right? Let's give him a warm up. I'm not going to say much. I never talked before games to a team before, so this is my first time. Um, enjoy it, man, because for you young guys, you're going to get a lot of reps tonight you might not get later on in the preseason, so take advantage of the reps you get. Every rep you take is on film. That's being around, put around all the NFL. It's like your audition. So take advantage of it. Um, I'm excited for y'all season, man. I, I think you guys are going in the right direction. The NFC is tough. I think y'all going to be right there at the top. And one more thing, man, about the tradition of the Bears. Like you said, I'm 28 going into the Hall of Fame. Think about that. 28 Hall of Famers before you guys have put this jersey on. Walter Payton, Dick Buckus, Mike Singletary, Gail Sears. And the list goes on and on, man. And, just realize that. Be proud to put that jersey on. I was proud to wear it for 13 years. Didn't always work out great for us. But it was great memories, great teammates, great memories. Um, just happy to be part of this organization. So thanks for having me, Coach. I appreciate it. Have fun tonight. Um, wish y'all come to the party after the game. Let's do that out there to your coach, to your GM place. Uh, I got shot down, but if y'all were invited, just know that. <laughs> you want to get a break? Can you get oh, a break to. Down? Yeah, yeah. Come on, we're gonna play hard on three. One, two, three. Play hard. fans football is back and this is our special post hall of fame game report and with me is danny shimon draft doctor phil Toshin, and shane you marsaw know. we are gonna get straight to analysis of this game by the way bears girl wishes everybody a good night she's fast asleep because she's going to be on a plane early tomorrow morning to chicago so that she can spend the weekend over at bourbon a so she wishes you all the very best guys that's bullshit <laughs> Air she's here, here in spirit too. though she's she's here in spirit absolutely I want to go around the table and get your immediate impressions on this first game, this first glimpse of the Matt Nagy Chicago Bears. Clearly, we know that the playbook is not. This is all about player evaluation and so forth. So tell me what your first impressions are of your evaluations of some of the players that uh, we saw tonight. I'm going to begin with, I'm spinning the bottle, and I'm going to begin with Shane, the smartest man in the barroom, Marsaw. Well, I, I guess I'll hop right on and steal everybody else's thunder because I'm sure everybody <laughs> was pissed off like I was with this Kevin White, you know, bullshit, for lack of a better, better term. Uh, they're mm -hmm. continuing to treat this guy like he's a proven veteran, played in five games heading into year four. And I, I just why he would not play tonight and and play quite a few reps. The guy needs reps. That's the way you're going to get better. I just don't understand it. Putting him on the bench, uh, to me, makes no sense. And for us to question Nagy, the, you know, in this first game, I have, a, I have a big problem with it. It's just to – it's – Year after year after year, this guy is getting treated like he's a, a, a proven player. And he he's proven nothing to this point other than he's, you know, untapped talent that's not very talented on the field. And I, I don't know. It pisses me off. I, I just don't understand it. And I hate to be that way because there was a lot of young players that balled out tonight. But that's, that's my number one, number two, and number three thing that's, that's – uh, on the top of my list tonight. Well, I uh, I think you probably did steal everybody's thunder. <laughs> uh, draft Dr. Phil, what were your impressions? Well, I hate to being bang on the, the naggy drum, but the first thing I think as a young, as a head coach, he did wrong is he didn't start Mitch Trubisky out there. And this is why, before you get all panicky and meatballish, uh, 
you prepare all week for two weeks. All the practices, you're putting in the play, you want to get the verbiage. These are scrimmages. This is football. You put the starters out there for one series, and you let them run through what they prepare for so you can practice getting ready to play a football game. Now, they have four more, Phil. They have this. I'm just telling you the first thing I thought of. I thought it was a wrong move not going out there for one series. If it was three handoffs, that's fine. If you want to keep Jordan Howard and Cohen on the bench, that's fine too. But I think the quarterback coming into his second year needs to prepare himself to get ready to play, have the coach in your ear, go through the huddle, the verbiage, prepare yourself like it's a game. You can't prepare, oh, only get four now. It, it's important to me that – I think he missed that. Shane and I, I said it, I don't know, when they drafted Wims and uh, Anthony Miller, that Kevin White better be in the competition and not just put at the front of the line. You could say he's fifth string, fourth string, whatever string you're pulling. I'm telling you this guy has done nothing. And the eyeball test tells me immediately, like I said on Twitter, in six routes, I knew this kid is more confident. He's a hands focus catcher, and I'm talking about Javon Wims, Danny's boy. It's evident in just a short second of a scrimmage. Well, it's not the game. These guys are going to be bagging groceries. All that BS that everyone throws out there without recognizing it, these jobs on the line, lives on the line, money's on the line, families are on the line. These guys are playing the best of the best. Are they going to be starters in this league? No, but it is a competition going live. Something that Kevin White has not done, and he's not done it well. His issues are his playbook. He doesn't know it. Now you got a new offense, verbiage. He's, he's working hard. He's body beautiful. There's a lot of body beautiful guys working at the gym, training, you know, 18 to 40 year old women right now. Okay, that shit doesn't matter. What does matter is going out there, doing it live and gaining your confidence. To me, those are two drop balls before we get into a lot of positive things. I got to get those two things off my chest. And then the third thing is how was Mike? Burton on this team. How, how in in a world you could give me a fullback that catches the football in the flat? I could find you one at freaking local Walmart on a freaking first of the month. I'll find you a fullback. Guarantee. Any city that what you're seeing out there on a blitz pickup and put it up, it's pathetic. I, I just don't get it. And starting the game, even at that, it just baggles my mind now, though, these things. So not the kind of night I wanted to see in regards to the beginning and some of the decisions. But at the end of the game, I saw a coach coaching like you want to win and it's a there's money on the line. I like that. And I like a lot of the aggressiveness. We wouldn't have seen this many pass. I wonder what the stat line is of a, a pass versus run tonight. It was like you're watching the 92 Buffalo Bills, for God's sake. <laughs> out there. So, it's going to be interesting. But those decisions, the Kevin White thing is, I, I'm with Shane 100%. Al, though, it's inexcusable. Well, it can, really is. I can tell you that there were 19 rushing attempts by the Chicago Bears offense and 46 mm -hmm. passing attempts. <laughs> Danny Shimon, share with us your thoughts before I share some of the thoughts of our friends in the chat room. We've got nearly 40 people there, and uh, I'm sure more are coming before they turn off the lights and go to bed. Danny, what are your thoughts? Well, it's a good thing the Phil and Shane went first because I'm not as upset that Kevin White didn't play today because this tells me one thing, tells me he made the team already. He's on this team. And I tweeted earlier, I already have my six receivers for this team. 
no receiver today playing will beat out Kevin White for a roster spot other than Javon Wims. I, and I think Javon Wims is one of the six receivers that's going to head into the season on this roster. So I'm not as – I understand where they're coming from. I understand why they're upset. He does need reps. He hasn't proven anything. But I wasn't that, you know, upset about him not playing. I did want to see some of the other guys on, on the roster. And unfortunately, we did see them drop a lot of passes. So that was – that was one of the things that uh, really turned me off in, in terms of tonight's game was the lack of concentration and the lack of being able to to make a play with, with the ball in terms of the receivers and even the tight ends, too. So uh, overall, what I went into the game looking for is I wanted to see the new coaching staff. Danny, I wanted to see how... Danny, I'm going yep. to interrupt you because Matt Nagy is at the podium right now. All right, well... That was a, a, a great experience uh, overall the last couple of days for, for our team to be able to come here and experience this uh, Hall of Fame game and, and then uh, to come out here and play a different team in the Ravens. And I think the biggest thing uh, for us as a staff and organization and really both sides is that I think uh, for the most part, teams came out pretty clean. You know, having that extra game, uh, you get a lot more reps. And uh, one of the biggest issues that you can run into is health. And so I'm not so sure about their side, but our side was pretty good. And, and um, you know, what we just talked about as a team is we just care about the guys' effort. These are guys' reps, uh, valuable reps for these backups. And uh, they're putting it on tape. And we said, you know, leave no regrets. And uh, for the most part, uh, it was, none of it was because of effort. So I thought our defense played really well. They, uh, they created a lot of takeaways. They had a bunch of sacks, uh, which changes field position, uh, which was um, really neat to see. And, and um, so they'll, they'll keep growing there. I thought special teams did a good job with, uh, you know, with, with some of the stuff they, they had with the field position and the field goal, et cetera, and uh, the communication on the sideline for me being my first time with the coaches. And then offensively, um, you know, there's, there's going to be some growing pains. And uh, we, have some, uh, we have some guys right now that are – going through this for the first time and they have a lot of different responsibilities with protections and and um, with route assignments and conversions and so Baltimore did a good job at throwing a lot of stuff at us and doing different things which is good for our guys and uh, we'll learn they'll be able to get uh, see where their mistakes are and then let's come back next week and, and not make the same mistakes. Matt, philosophically could you talk about the decision to keep so many starters down tonight? Yeah it it, it just to, in my opinion it doesn't make sense it, it just doesn't we uh we still have a quarter of a season left to play before we play week one. So uh, it, it's, it's just uh, it, it's a risk-reward deal, and it's just too much of a risk for, for such a little reward. With the picture, what do you take out of tonight? Because with, with so many of the, the key guys. Yeah, well, what we take is you get to see where your depth is. You get to see where guys are at, where you need to work on from here. And, and then uh, these guys, I mean, yeah, as you can see, we're, we were a little short, um, you know, offensive line. You know, we picked up Jack the other day, and, and for him to come in here and on such a short notice and come in and, and play center, that's, that's hard to, to, to have all the protection checks that we have and with the quarterback. And so I thought he, he did well, all things considered. So depth is the biggest thing. How about speak to where? Game? How Go ahead. How was this game for you just to kind of – yeah, the, the game was valuable for me and, and, and our staff um, because, trust me, we've spent a lot of time here in the last couple of days uh, trying to dot the I's and cross the T's in so many areas. Just so many things that you don't really think about going through it for the first time. You know, how are you going to do this? Uh, how are you going to handle this, this time management? What's your process? Now, you talk about it, you know it, but when it actually happens and the bullets are flying, you know, what, what, how are you going to react to it? So I, I was really proud of the staff, uh, you know, uh, the communication on the, on the headsets, um, the way things went. For me, uh, knowing now that I have the full responsibility of all three phases, uh, it's a little different. I'm not, I'm not with the quarterback as much as I used to be, uh, but now I rely more with Rags and Mark on, on, uh, on how that thing's going. How, do you, how does it speak to where Anthony Miller is right now? That he was among the guys who didn't play that. Well, yeah, it's, it, it does say that he's doing some good things, and, and so uh, – um, he trusts me. He's got to keep growing as well. So uh, it, it, it means nothing other than he just didn't play tonight. And he's going to get plenty of opportunities here. Um, he's a talented kid. Uh, he still has a ways to go, and he understands that. There at the end of the uh, first half when you took a timeout, I think when they were facing third down, what's that conversation like? Do you have somebody upstairs who's in your ear? Walk us through just the process. Yeah, so we, we, uh, we, there's, there's a couple of us coaches that, that talk, and uh, – um, we already, you know, I, I feel like 
Um, we have a staff right now that's really good with time management. And, and now, does that, does that mean you're never going to make mistakes? Absolutely not. But we, we, uh, we talk every single night as a team and as a, as a staff. Every night in, in, uh, in training camp, we go over different situations time management-wise. And, uh, and so that's important. So the, now we get to test it. We get to see how it works. Um, and uh, so we were trying to get the ball back so we could get another opportunity to try to score, especially knowing that they were going to get the ball in the third quarter. We talked to some of the young guys in the locker room. They talked about the impact of having Brian stop by before the game and talk to them. What was that like for you as the head coach to watch your team listen to a Hall of Famer? It, it, was, it was a special moment for, for our organization. Um, the guys didn't really know what was going on. You know, we kind of kept it as a surprise. And uh, so once they got into the locker room, we, we called them up and we had, we had them walk, come out of the door and just kind of show up. And, and so I think right away you could feel the sense of, wow, you know, here he is and this is who this guy is. And they, a lot of them know who he was and how, how, how great of a player he was. And then for him to just give a little talk to the guys and, and uh, you don't get many of those talks. And so it was a special moment. Uh, I know I had I had chills, you know, listening to him talk, and I know our guys did too. You wanted them to understand just what it means to wear that Bears uniform, going to the hall and to Brian. You feel like they got that? For sure, I think they did. You know, I saw just from noticing where they were uh, when they were at the Hall of Fame and the, the, the videos they were taking, the pictures, the conversations that were going on, they understand the significance. They were all talking about it. And, and so now um, for him to be able to be in there and, and just kind of give him a little piece of uh, what it means to be a bear, uh, you, you, can't, you can't make that up. And so he, he gets it, they get it, we get it, and it's just a night we'll never forget. Matt, do you receive any more clarity after watching a couple calls on the helmet rule, or are you – well, so, you know, I'll be honest, the, the, the one in the end zone is a really, really tough call for those officials. It's a, it's a bang, bang call um, where there's now the, the whole helmet rule where, you know, with the crown and the face mask being up versus the targeting rule, which is what I was told that it was. This wasn't the, the new rule that, for the flag that was called. This was a, a launching deal. And so now you get into the launching deal and you start getting into where he launch and everything. And so it, it's hard, it, it's hard. And so as long as they explain it to us and which is what they did, um, that's all we can ask for. And then we just got to do our best to teach our guys uh, what's right from wrong. Matt, do you have an official policy on the Well, we, we, uh, I want to start off by giving tons of credit to our, um, our players and then to our organization and staff because we, we did it together. And, and so the, the players decided to, to kind of uh, uh, talk through this thing. Um, we, we then, as a group, talked about it, and we decided this is what we're doing. And, and really, two, two things stand out for us, and it's uh, unity and togetherness for us. And there's a lot more that, that goes on to it. We understand that. We recognize it. And we'll continue to, 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 to work towards that. But um, the guys were really excited to, to come up with, with one deal as a team. Um, understand there's more out there, but we did, we did it together. So that was, that was really neat. And you had all 90 guys out there. Or all your guys. Yeah, they were. I think so. They were all out there. I couldn't see. I couldn't see everybody. But uh, you know, um, from what they we talked about, I, I think, I think it happened. And what are your early impressions of Javon Wims tonight, and as well as what he's showing for the first few weeks? So Javon is a. Uh, he's a kid that has excellent hands. Really, really good hands. He's got phenomenal ball skills, and and he showed that in college. Now, uh, he's a receiver that that's a good route runner. He can become better. He knows that. Uh, and then again, um, when you get out on stage and you start getting some guys that are going to come up and press you, how are you going to play against the press? And I thought he did a good job. He made some big time catches over the middle in crucial situations, and so he's a big target. So it's nice throwing the big guys. What's the value for him of having that just initial taste of production? It's good. It's good for every one of these guys. You know, these rookies that come out here. I mean, a def defensively too. These defensive, these guys that came out here, these rookies that uh, that played really well, and um, you know, it's exciting. There, there was a really good feel on that sideline, and t there, there were mistakes, and we understand that. The players understand it. They're not trying to make mistakes, but a good vibe, a good feel, and and now um, we you know we get we get back to being healthy. We get back to beating each other up again in practice, and then we go to the Bengals. Matt, now that you've gotten this Last one on your belt, you and the team. How much better do you feel about things right now, just from your perspective as a new head coach? Well, I certainly. Feel Feel like we we got better. The arrows up for us. Uh, it wasn't one of those deals where we came out and and just totally were were um, you know unprepared, uh, 
unenergetic where the guys didn't care. There was a lot of one. The, the guys did well. So we definitely took the step in the right direction. And now for us, um, we, we, uh, we just hone in on, on our weaknesses as, a, as an organization, as a team, as players. And, and they'll do that. They'll really do that. Oh, my God. I love this guy's press conferences. <laughs> I'm sitting here thinking about John Fox, and he would have been... <laughs> But we, uh, we got uh, really good analysis, some honesty. I want to go back to Danny to finish his opening thoughts, and then we can talk about what, uh, what Mr. Matt Nagy just shared with us. Danny, please. Yeah, so the thing I was looking at, first of all, was the coaching staff and, and Nagy and how he would handle you know, game situations in terms of you know, timeouts, uh, challenges, if they present themselves. You know, does he challenge a dumb plays? Does, does he actually make you know, good decisions in, in calling challenges, uh, play clock management, play clock manipulation in terms of getting the, the calls into the quarterback with plenty of time for him to go up to the line of scrimmage, you know, with, for him to even, if he has to check out of a play, to check out of a play. So all that went well. I didn't, I didn't see anything that stuck out that says, all right, you know, he, he messed up here or there. Uh, and then like Phil mentioned, at the end of the game, you know, he was aggressive. He was trying to win. You know, he, I, I even tweeted out uh, Swaggy Nagy going for two. You know, trying to win the game, and, and I know it's exhibition, and he just you know doesn't want to go for overtime. But um, so I like that. I like that part of it. And the other thing I was looking for, I was trying to see if these two kids, Kelly Fitz and Isaiah Irving, you know, could step up and and compete for a starting role on the at the outside linebacker position opposite of Leonard Floyd. And I think Isaiah Irving was the player of the game in the first half. I mean, he was, you know, he, he was called for an offsides, but he had a strip sack. Uh, he showed this athleticism, being able to get off the line of scrimmage uh, quickly, being able to you know shed the um, the offensive lineman's hands off him and bend the corner and get to the quarterback. So and he made, made a couple of nice runs uh, against um, a couple of nice plays against the run, shed the blocker, found the ball carrier and, and took him down. And um, so I think he had a great for you know pretty good first half. And then you know Fitz um, had a pretty decent game as well, had a sack in there as well. Uh, you can see he is not as twitchy or as as uh, as loose hipped as as Irving is but you know he he went with more you know speed and power straight line speed and power so he's got some more development to do but he showed some signs today as well and um and the other guys the rookie class basically you know my boy Javon Wims showed why you know he should have been drafted higher than the seventh round and uh um Bilal Nichols the defensive lineman made a couple of nice plays so I think overall for the first game I think there's a lot of uh, encouraging uh, developments tonight. Great analysis. Danny, I want to now go to Shane. What was it that Matt Nagy just said that uh, stuck out to you? Well, it just, you know, Danny kind of alluded to it. It wasn't really anything that he said too much. I just, when I went into this, I wanted to, it's hard to say that you want to see him be aggressive when you're playing a five pre, uh, preseason game schedule, but I wanted him to get in certain situations and be just be decisive. Like when Danny talked about going for it on the fourth down, you just knew sitting here last year at this time, you knew John Fox, even in a preseason game, wasn't going to be aggressive, wasn't going to put the Bears on the line to go out there and make a play, even though it was in preseason when they had Cody Parkey kick that, that one field goal tonight, I was thinking to myself, you know, just go for it. It's, it's preseason. Who cares? It's, you know, this is where these guys are learning, but I understand you want to get your kickers some some burn too. But it, overall, that's really – I wrote some things down uh, before the game that I wanted to see, and when it came to, to the coaching staff, it was just be decisive in what you're doing. I didn't want to see any, you know, major gaffes you know, just in the communication and, and, and stuff like that. But um, overall, I was I was happy with what I saw from Nagy and what he's, he's saying afterwards. Other than the, I mean, I totally disagree with uh, Danny's take on Kevin White. I, I mean, I just, the mm-hmm. kid's heading into year four, and he's got five games of experience. Kevin White has played in, seven games of 13 in the preseason in his career. And he's got 10 catches for 101 yards in all those games. We saw a rookie seventh round draft pick playing with a third (laughs) string quarterback tonight had 89 yards. And I know stats don't matter in the preseason, but this, this, this guy was the seventh pick overall. 
what are you protecting him from? Why? What, what, what does Kevin White learn from being on the bench that he hasn't learned the past three seasons where he's been on the bench for 85, 90, 95 percent of the time? It's Jesus. to me, it's baffling. And like Danny said, it's pretty obvious they have big things in store for Kevin White. But what you're telling me that every rep matters as a head coach. I, you know, Matt Nagy says that. Vic Fangio says that. We're, we're sitting here saying, Roquan Smith, you're missing these reps. They're so important. Oh, but you so took my fucking so, point. So Kevin White's reps <laughs> in a scripted practice. Where you can't tackle are more important than live reps in a preseason game where he needs to get calloused, to use Nagy's words. And they're not putting him out there. I mean, I no matter where he is on the depth chart, fourth your fourth wide receiver, who show me a team in the NFL that's protecting their fourth wide receiver that's heading into year four. That's only played in five games. To me, it's I had a Twitter debate tonight all on this. And I just to me, I'm baffled by it. It's I don't know. I don't I, I really I have no answer to it. And, and I know we shouldn't just sit here and harp on Kevin White, but I'm doing a good job of that. <laughs> because There's a lot of, you know, the, this rookie class showed out and in even some of the UDFA guys. I think Michael Joseph, I, I like what I saw from yeah. him, you know, on, on special teams and Rashad Coward is That's, Don't he's steal a, all my shit. Hey, <laughs> hey Jesus Phil, he's Phil, been real, quick, real quick, team. Phil, real quick, Phil. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I mean just to for me to put the Kevin White thing to rest, it's it's shocking. So what what's gonna happen next week? Is he gonna go out there? Is he gonna play the first quarter? And then come off with the starters? Is that what's gonna happen? I to me it makes no sense. You're protecting it's, the guy from nothing. Well it's let, before ridiculous. Uh, be, Phil, before you jump <laughs> in here, I just want to get a few of the comments from uh, the folks in the chat room. And by the way, the fire chief has come into the chat room and has warned us that uh, we are we may have more people than uh, as allowed under uh, the law. <laughs> <laughs> we got a record amount of people in the chat room, and thank you all for tuning in. Isaiah Robles says that when he was at camp, he heard one of the coaches yelling at Kevin White for lining up in the wrong spot, mm-hmm. and he agrees Good. that with with Shane that it's BS, and and Kevin White should have been out there. Gaines report says that they're keeping Kevin White still under bubble wrap. Ryan D'Onofrio exactly. says that he feels that Javon Wims is doing what Kevin White should be doing. Brian Quinn says Kevin White should have been out there two or three quarters. Ryan Kirkland Billing says White not playing isn't that big of a deal to me if he is a slotted starter then we have an issue. And there were a couple of other people who agreed with Danny or said that Danny was making a good point that they hadn't Yeah, I would like to know who the frig they are because <laughs> Danny's point is awful. <laughs> and I'm going to double down on this. Uh, I'm not saying he's a starter. Isaiah Robles is uh, reading my language here, Danny. I'm talking about mentally the guy is a midget when it comes to the playbook and a new verbiage. You get them out there, especially Kevin White. Forget about – Shane hit it out of the park and dropped the mic just on the physicality of not doing it. But now mentally I know – that this kid struggles with the playbook. So now we're going to throw a, a new playbook, uh, one that actually is aggressive and is asking him to do the things that I'm watching Greg Braggs Jr.'s tape, friend of our room, and I'm seeing Kevin White being stiff, tense, and not fluid. So then sporadically he'll, he'll show a good play. That consistency is what you get in live reps. So as Wims, Sigmund Bloom tweeted at me tonight. Perfect examples, Aldo. I said, Wims just looks better on six routes than I've ever seen Kevin White. That's the truth. You could, oh, he's going to get scrubs. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about confidence, live, running your route exactly how it's supposed to be, and catching the football, doing it in a game. 
Sigmund Bloom tweets out, confidence goes a long way. What is Kevin White lacking? And that's why Shane and I are harping on this. This isn't a pick on anybody. This is actually recognizing that you don't just hand somebody who hasn't done it the, the bench to say you've got it locked up. Is Kevin White better than Javon Wims? In your no. mind. Huh? No, he's not. No, he's exactly. not. Exactly. But they're going to play him. Oh, he's the third best receiver tomorrow. He, he'll start in front of Anthony Miller when everybody in the bro. If that's what we're getting here, that's a concern for me. Because Kevin White has done absolutely nothing to tell me he deserves anything. I mean, he, right. Benny Fowler and Kevin White look like the same guys. 13 oh, out on. there. I'm telling you, that's all I've ever seen of him. No consistency. Well, you yeah. seek. I mean, he's he's been hurt, but to compare it to Benny Fowler, I mean, wow. I'm just <laughs> saying that. <don't laughs> you know the you know the thing you know that's what? baffling I mean to me. Talent. I'm talking yeah. about performance. Well, David. I think I think what I, I don't think he's a starter. I, I think he's made the team. Okay, and, and the only thing I think the, the coaching staff was thinking by going into this game was, hey, these are the guys at the end of the, the roster that let's see if these guys have anything to do to maybe to compete in the other you know, game two, three, and four. So that's why they gave these guys all the reps and I think held out Kevin White and the other guys. But I think going forward, games two, three, and four, I think what they're going to do is Kevin White will be in there with the backups in the third quarter, possibly even in the fourth quarter. You know, I, I think this game that he sat out and, and and this is me, right, talking. I'm, I don't know what Nagy's thinking, but I'm just thinking that these guys at the end of the, the roster, these receivers that all kind of bunched up together, they wanted to see if anyone would go ahead and pop up and separate themselves. And you want to give them as many reps as they possibly could. And obviously, Javon Wims, you know, demonstrated, you know, he's, he's ready to play ball. And uh, so, so I think now going forward, you'll see Kevin White with, and with the backups and with, you know, Daniels and with, and with Bray trying to make this roster or, or, or secure a spot on the roster. But I mean, anybody playing today besides Wims, and I think Wims is already on the team, anybody receiver-wise playing today is not going to beat out Kevin White for a roster spot. Where does confidence play in all this? <laughs> That's what I'm you, saying. I mean, it makes you hear zero the, you, sense. You hear, the, you hear the offensive coordinator, the wide receivers coach, the head coach, talk about Kevin White's confidence. We don't get on him in, in practice too much because we want him he's got a to have that slate. He's got that next play mentality. So you know it's a mental game for the guy. But now you're just you're you're placating it mm-hmm. by tre- by putting him on a pedestal. And I mean if he's if he's at the the end of your depth chart on your final fifty three and your wide receiver depth chart, then those the, I mean he those are the guys that you should be playing. Right. Oh, I, I agree he needs reps, right? But I'm just saying, like, going forward now, it, you know, it's the yeah, first game. You're, you're, a, a you're lot skipping of guys, over the, that you agree that he needs reps. You see what I'm but saying, he, Dan? But he should not be out of this game tonight. But he's so. going to get plenty of reps going forward. Now, if, yeah, if game, but, if but Danny, week, that's the, that's the week point, though. Out, that's what but, they said the last but, time. I mean, I mean he's but, playing behind a, a third or fourth string offensive line with, with a backup quarterback putting the ball past 20 yards downfield. I mean, what's no, Kevin Danny, going to do? No, but that's but not Danny, true. Danny, if you look at if you look at a guy like Josh Bellamy, who's played the last, you know, say the last three seasons, like Kevin White, he's the end of the depth chart guy. On he's the, out on the there playing, season, and he's out there playing preseason. He's out there playing in the regular season. Why not Kevin White? Exactly. Right. Because I think, I think maybe we're mind. the only show that's going to ask this question because Kevin White has done diddly squat. I don't and, agree at all with Danny because oh, next week we're going to put Kevin White out there. Why not tonight? What is so he what done? done? I, I mean, I'm Danny, not, would you agree just, if he goes out there next week? Would you go out there and uh, would you agree if Kevin White goes out next week and and plays a couple of series with the starters and they pull him? No, I would not agree with that. Okay. No, I would not agree yeah, with that. No. Just to me, no. when you're, when I, I'm, you're... Just, I'm just saying today, I, the, the way they, they played this game, it, with all these like third or fourth strings, some even f- guys will, will have no chance of making this team starting and playing tonight. 
I just think that they felt like they wanted to give these guys a chance to, to play and, and, and shine as many reps as they can get. And that's, and, then exactly gonna go what, forward. and that's exactly what Matt Nagy said in the postgame conference. He said, we have a quarter of a season left before week one against the Packers. So you, you have to keep that in perspective. Also in the chat room, Harp4803 makes a really good point, Danny. It's a new playbook for Kevin White. And Bears fan for life has maybe the, the – the, the comment of the night so far in the chat room, I like this. He says that Kevin White gets everyone fired up for all the wrong reasons. <laughs> <laughs> right? Exactly. And, you know, the thing about it is, too, is, is I, I'm on the road a lot, so I'm listening to different podcasts and listening to what we do here. Adam Hogue thinks that Kevin White is in trouble of even make making the roster. the roster. Yes, and then I heard. You, you listen to Bob Laguerre today, and Bob Laguerre, Laguerre, however the fuck you say it, he, <laughs> he was Kevin White's finally becoming the wide receiver that, you know, that they drafted seventh overall. Watching him in practice, it's, it's been a, you know, a thing of beauty. He, he, he shouldn't play tonight. You know, you can't risk it. And it's everybody's all over the map on this guy. But, I mean, if you're t- – you can't tell me with a straight face that every rep matters and exactly. then not play the guy. And you're talking about a guy going into year four that has played half of the preseason games that have been allotted to him. You know what I mean? He's he, baffling. I got to uh, break in here because Nikki Kurtz has said enough of this. We're making too big of a deal out of uh, the Kevin White. And Isaiah Robles says, can we please talk about the backup quarterback situation? And that is indeed one of the topics that I had on my list of things to talk about. I was so disappointed with what I saw on Bears 100 Proof. I started talking <laughs> alcohol feud about these backup quarterbacks, know the system. Blah, blah, blah. Hey, I, I couldn't believe I, I saw a tweet. Uh, Chase Daniels has made $24 million in his career as a backup. And, and Chris Collinsworth on the a broadcast said, I'm looking forward to seeing Chris, uh, Chase Daniels play because all the coaches love him. He knows the offense. I don't care if he knows the offense. He cannot throw. I mean, I mean, Shane, I think you, you tweeted out he's making too many throws off his back foot. Yeah, so Man, was, he doesn't was, need was, to. Yeah, yeah. I was going to tweet uh, yeah. hashtag short quarterback problems. I mean, that, that's what happens. Yeah. You can't see over the line. You know, he threw a ball off the helmet off his own offensive lineman, and it got yeah. intercepted. So I, I don't, I don't get the Chase Daniels love from all these, you know, coaches in the NFL. Uh, well, he's, God forbid, he, if this goes down, we're in trouble. He's not here for his talent. Right, he's here to help guys. He's here because and, he knows and, the and playbook, and, and that's it. And that's, that's, that's wrong in and of itself. Yeah, but if Trubisky goes down, I mean, who are you going to play? You're going to play Chase Daniels, right? No, no, that's what I'm saying. But that's the, the Chase, you know, and, well, if we're going to say that, that, you know, Kevin White's learning a new playbook and stuff like that and say that, you know, these guys are playing, they're playing guys at the end of the roster, you know, Chase Daniels is playing with those guys too. You know, those guys in front exactly. of him. Exactly. So you got to give him the benefit of the doubt there. But one other thing, Shane, to your point right there, if Benny Fowler catches the ball, it's a, yeah. it's a touchdown. Mm-hmm. There's no interception off the helmet in the next play. That's why That's football point. can't be like misconstrued. It's anything could happen in this game. It tells a different narrative now, Danny, than him delivering a perfect pass because. That was a money ball, and he threw but, a couple I mean, money balls that were dropped. So, and to Shane's point, these players surrounding, you can't say, well, they're bottom, none of them are making it, but Chase has got to make chicken salad out of it. And, and that's not fair. That's why another coaching reason why Kevin White should be out there to help your quarterback get rhythm with him. He's your backup quarterback. If this guy goes down, you're just proving the point. Being made, you. This is football. This is so soccer. Confident? So if, if um, Trubisky goes down, you'd be confident in Chase Daniel starting. First? I don't know. Chase. I'm not judging Chase Daniel on a, a first preseason game. That would no, be a, I'm just an judging epic on, on failure. His, 
I'm judging so, him on his, on his body of work for his career. I, I just I don't get the. He hasn't had a body of work. Well, whenever I've seen him play, I just don't. Ha- I don't see why these coaches love Chase Daniels as a backup. Yeah, well, okay, well let's he's give had, him some had, opportunity with. Some he's talent. heading into year ten, and I think he's thrown. Would they say seventy eight career passes? And he's heading into year ten. And there are probably seventy of them probably be horrible passes too. There we go. It's. I mean, but that's that's the one thing that it's always driven me crazy with the Bears. We've obviously always had a quarterback issue here. And yes, I mean, most teams, if they lose their starter, that I mean, that the Bears aren't alone in that. It's right. very, very rare what Philadelphia did last year. But at the end of the day, I realize that Chase Daniel is here for Mitch and because he knows the playbook. But you got to get that. This is where I get so pissed off this time of year is oh, everybody will say, oh, Josh Bellamy, he's going to make the team because he can play special teams. That drives me nuts. Yes, you have to have those guys. You have to get the best 53 mm-hmm. players and then sort out the special teams from there. This is the problem. Go out and get the best talent that you can acquire and then work down from there. Don't just say – you know what? John Fox was the coach last year. If we had Javon Wims, Javon Wims wouldn't be making this team. Would be making the 53 because of Josh Bellamy and the asshole that played for Buffalo last year and is in Dallas this year. I can't yeah, even remember Deontay the guy's Thompson. name. Yeah, Deontay Thompson. It's just little it's <laughs> stuff like that. But, I mean, as far as if Mitch goes down – you, you can say that if Aaron Rodgers goes down, if Chase or if uh, Matthew Stafford goes down or Kirk Cousins, that, that's going to be true for 95% of the NFL. So, but I mean, it's, it is what it is. He's here for Mitch and Mitch goes down. Yeah. It's, it's no secret. We're, we're fucked. Let's uh, talk about uh, some more on the offensive side of the football before we get to the defense, which I think had a really good showing in some aspects today. I want to talk about Javon Wims. Danny, that was your guy. You really uh, spoke highly of him pre-draft. He had seven catches tonight for 89 yards, a long of 24. He caught uh, seven of the ten balls thrown his way. Danny, what did you see? How much do you, do you like this guy even more now? I, I love this guy coming out of college, and, and basically what I saw today is what I saw on his tape coming out of Georgia. He's not a guy who's he's not a guy who'll take a top off of defense. He doesn't run a four three forty. Uh, he, he doesn't create much separation at the at the break, you know, uh, at the top of his route. But what he does is he can go ahead and he can he has a big catch radius, meaning he can extend away from his body with good arm length and big strong hands to pull in those those fifty fifty balls to be able to dive for a ball to be able to uh, contort his body with terrific body control to go up and get the ball. So that's why I, I was kind of frustrated. I, I even tweeted out, I'm like, all right, you're, you're down at the 20 yard line here. Just throw up a, a ball, jump ball for him, go up, let him go and make a play. And they just they didn't do that. But um, so <laughs> Tyler Bray might have tried, and he just put it in the fourth row, though. <laughs> yeah, I think I think that was attempt. You're right. He was like it was like not even anywhere in his vicinity. But um, yeah, basically what I saw from today from Javon Williams is what I saw at Georgia. So and that's what one of the reasons why I was so high on this kid coming into the draft. Then, uh, Phil, you agree about uh, Javon Wims? Javon Wims, I don't know how else I could say it. I mean, the kid impressed the heck out of me with his ability to run his routes. I mean, I put it up. He does a stop and go, but he has full awareness of where he believes the ball's going to be because his head's not even turned around. When you get an, a, a receiver who is as agile in the air with focused hands, and, and what I mean by that, you, I always say you catch the ball with your eyes first and foremost. You see through it. Don't be, we always see it. They turn and look and drop the football. But when you, you look the ball in, this kid does that in close quarters. He showed me playing outside the numbers. He did everything you want to see a receiver to do, and then he finished with making big plays. And then you got to love the excitement. These guys are trying to make football teams. I've seen people on Twitter, oh, it's what are you getting excited? 
He's getting excited because he's playing football, number one. He's on national television, number two. And any competitor who makes that kind of football play, I mean, that was a catch. That that contortion and control and hand-eye coordination, it, it looks so easy in slow motion now, though. Mm-hmm. We take things for granted. But when that's, that ball's going, you know, 45, 50 miles an hour coming down, turning as you're running 20 something miles an hour with your head and eyes on the football you got to get excited give me guys that want this game that compete that kind of energy was out there that charisma and confidence you know you talk about this football player to me the thing that most stood out was the story of kevin white versus this kid because in six plays i knew this kid gave me wow this is a football player. Some some guys don't practice well. Some guys play great when the lights are on them. This guy seems to be that kind of football player. And to me, you know, not to go back to it, but it really is a letdown because you, Bob Laguerre can love people in practice, but what does it matter? Games, that's when it matters. And say whatever you want. You know, if you're in a bar fly listening or you're in the chat room, these guys, these guys are going to be working at McDonald's. These guys are bagging groceries next week. If you're that kind of football guy, then you don't understand why they even do this game. Because competition out of anybody with heart. There's so many undrafted free agent stories and guys that have – the slowest 40 time whatsoever playing safety, getting off the hash, making plays because they study the game that were afterthoughts. Terrell Davis, for Christ's sake, was going to get cut. This is the kind of stuff that you got to look at. And if guys are competing and wanting it, I think that makes this game the best it possibly could be. And, and that's what you saw from him tonight, that it's exciting because one thing I'm not worried about, is the talent a receiver. I am worried about Kevin White because I got to see it. That's all. Shane, I was a little disappointed. Go ahead, Danny. You had a thought? No, the one thing uh, Phil touched on uh, when's rut running, keep in mind, this kid uh, was a former basketball player, and he, he was a mm-hmm. Juco transfer yep. to Georgia. He only played two years. And he got hurt his junior year. So this kid is still developing as a rut runner. He's still developing as a receiver. We haven't seen the best of him yet. We haven't seen him exactly. hit his big potential. So this kid is... He's got the tools. He's got the, just the raw ability to make, go up and make a catch. And he's going to get better. He's going to be able to run better routes, crisper routes, create separation. So this kid is, is I, in my opinion, when the Bears drafted him in the seventh round, I was ecstatic. So I I he, he, One other thing. Aldo caught, captured the play, the first catch he made in traffic. Yeah. That is a uh, – what's his name? Damn, Bolden. A Anquan. Bold, yeah. Anquan. Anquan Bolden catch. Yeah. Full, that's a vet. Like, if Kevin White or any receiver I could think of in the last two years could have made that play, please tell me. Someone please tell me and show me because I don't think you get the kind of physicality and f- motion of distraction crossing your face with contact and you make that play on a critical third down. That That's... When reps matter, Shane. Yeah, That's absolutely. When reps matter. Danny, you're talking about the basketball player background with him. He He's not a carbon copy, but I see a lot of Cam Meredith in this kid. You know what I mean? I don't think he's, he's, he's more just, physical than Meredith. Yeah, no, that, that's yeah, what I was just going to say. He's he's a little – I think he's a little bit thicker in the in the body, and he is more physical than Cam. But he's got that, that bigger body, and – he just reminds me, of, you saw him take a couple of those slant passes. He's yeah. never going to be like if you hit Deshaun Jackson on, on a slant and he just, you know, he, he's gone. He's not that type of guy, but he's, he's that guy that's going to body off the defender and he's just going to, he's going to chew up those yards like Anquan Bolden. He's never going to, you know, go over the top very rarely, but I, I see him as that type. You know, Cam was a little bit, you know, undrafted free agent who paced you know, eyeballed in a tryout in Chicago and, and signed him. And it's the same type of deal. Danny, you, you watched him at Georgia. 
Whenever he played, he he just he got better every single game. I mean, the national right. title game against Alabama could have been different. He got hurt. He got hurt exactly. Yeah, yeah. their best and, best wide receiver got he he got hurt and taken out of the game. But yeah, exactly. uh, this kid, I mean, he's you you want to see him stack to, to the next game. Now that's that's the next part in the process. You want to see him take this game and you want him, you want him to go out next game and, and prove it again him. yeah yes. just, just build on a momentum keep, keep getting better keep getting better and force the coaches to put him onto the field you know for, force it force himself onto the field and shane you're right his yak his yards after after contact don't come with speed they come with physicality yeah. yeah he i mean he's got a, he's got a mean stiff arm he'll body defenders off of him he'll just bounce off of off of guys so uh, this kid, uh, I think, was very underrated coming into the draft process, and you know, he like you said, he was dealing with an injury, didn't really do uh, that well when he timed when he tested. Uh, was I think he saw some lingering effects of the injury, so I think that's why he probably dropped, um, you know, uh, to the seventh round for the Bears. But uh, it's it's one game, like I said, it's against guys who may not not be in the league, you know, this season. But it's very um, impressive and reassuring to see him do the things that we saw him do in college. Yeah, on a, on a pro field, so it's very it's a very good start for him. All right, I want to talk about the tight ends. Uh, there's not a mm-hmm. lot to say, um, <laughs> but uh, I, we, we always keep it a hundred uh, here, no matter what show we're working on. And like I said, that my man Colin Thompson while struggled today. Huh? He struggled, yeah, I, and he's he had an issue. I mean, he never caught a lot of passes in college. He was he was a blocker, and when I had him on uh, Bears on Tap. You know, he said that he was confident in his hands and he was going to prove it and he and that this Hall of Fame game was going to be huge for him. Well, you know, there were just a couple of uh, targets that he should have come down with the ball. So I, I feel bad for the guy. I bet you he's feeling really bad. He didn't have a terrible game, but it certainly wasn't uh, you know, what he would have wanted and what I wanted for him. Shane, any thoughts on Colin Thompson? Well, there's not a hell of a lot that I can add there. Although, I mean, I, we, we saw the way that it unfolded. There's those those two balls that I agree with you that he should have had. But the, the one thing that these guys need to realize, and even Bears fans need to realize, Matt Nagy loves to use the tight end in his mm-hmm. offense. I mean, Andy Reid and, and Doug Peterson, they're all from that from that same tree. The Bear, I mean, Deion Sims, uh, Trey Burton, Adam Shaheen, they're going to be on the 53-man roster. It's not going to surprise me if the Bears keep one or even two more tight ends on the practice squad. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, that's that's what I, that's what these guys, you know, you got, you're talking about Broniker. I, I, I was hoping I was going to see a little bit more of Daniel Brown tonight because I still like some of the attributes that that kid has. I mean, because he's got that wide receiver background. And I was hoping we'd see a little bit more of him tonight but um i think, I think a couple of up. these guys it, it, when they get familiar you know Nagy figures out exactly what they are and what they can do i'm not going to be surprised to see maybe one or two of these guys on the practice squad mm-hmm. i agree interesting you, you think sims makes the roster Deion okay. sims yes yeah okay. oh okay i, I, I mean sure. yeah money alone i think he's got he, he's guaranteed six million dollars what do you get are you gonna Cut him to let him go someplace else. So yeah, I I think he does. Okay. Yeah. Because I mean, he didn't have that good of a. Well, so far his training camp has been outstanding, but I mean, I, I just he has some some drops today. It's, that's just, I know it's just one right. thing, but uh, so I was just wondering. Game, Danny, they're they, they hard. They should have. They should have. Uh, they should have. They should have <laughs> sat him down and played some more guys at the end of the round. <laughs> yeah. Why does this play uh, Mike Speaking Burton of, at tight end? This a little Speaking bit of more. sitting down, uh, did, did you guys see James Daniels didn't even screw up? The, yeah, the yeah, rookie he's guard got a from shoulder. shoulder. He's got a shoulder injury. Okay, so the, it was announced because I didn't hear anything during the week that he was injured. Yeah, yeah they talked he talked about a okay. shoulder injury. Okay, yeah, on Monday. And that's, One other on. thing, Colin did make a nice catch. I put it up for Bears Barroom. Yep. He, he made did a nice on the catch sideline. on the sidelines. Yes, yeah. he yeah. did. So, yes, he did. He, uh, so it's Aldo's point. It wasn't what he would have wanted, but I think Shane's right in regards to, you know, this is one game. And you got to learn from it. That's these reps are so important, you know, selling that to Raquan and selling that to Kevin and white. I, I believe are two different things. I don't know, but out there, Colin, you just got to, you know, focus on 
this, the playbook and get back out there with those eyes and catch the football when it comes your way because he had an opportunity. And Shane Daniel Brown had an opportunity. It was on a third down. He was running that yep. out up posts, that quick skinny. And he, Tyler Bray, I think, put it right on a dime, right in the hole. He dropped it. Yep. Still got hit. It's like you got to make plays – you know, it's the difference between winning and losing is catching and dropping the football. And you'll see how many times that occurs on both sides of the football. All right. We so need to talk about get them out there. Ryan Nall, uh, the running back for the free agent pickup that uh, uh, Phil has been uh, ranting about. He loves this kid. He had one catch for five yards. He had seven carries for 13 yards. I thought, man, on one play, he was going to get into the end zone. He, he, he should have taken it outside. I think he would have scored. Numbers don't look good, but what did you see with your coach's eye draft, Dr. Phil? Well, I see him working with an offensive line that didn't know their assignments, and there wasn't much to do in the run game in regards to the game plan. So, I put up the fourth down play. I saw it right away. You know me, Aldo. I try to put it up right away because you'll hear the narrative. Ah, you can't get the first down. So on fourth and one, they're running a inside zone to the backside, try to try to make a power play. They're calling out the formation. They did everything right. They even got the look you wanted, that shaded nose guard where the center's going to step scoop. The guard should just put his hand there and get on that backer. There's a crease right there. The kid would have hit the hole and just been maybe in the secondary. But one guy breaks down their assignment and their technique, and the whole play goes to crap. And that's why it's important to know the tape and know what you're looking at because I put it up right away. It was clear as day, 62. I think the kid from Hawaii, he just – doesn't do the right assignment. If you go on my timeline or Bears Bar Room, you'll see the play I'm talking about, fourth and one. No, different story then. Again, just like the Benny Fowler drop. Football is a different breed. If Chris Collinsworth wants to praise uh, the kid Orlando, Orlando Brown, Brown all day and totally forget that Fitz whooped his ass twice, uh, Roy Robin Harris threw him an ass over tea kettle. But they're not going to show that. So if you want to run a narrative on television to make fans believe stuff, that's the problem. Or in the media. To me, now, he has what I want. I A vision, power back, a couple short yards. I put up my boy there, uh, Rashad, going after it and getting to the second level and just dominating. I mean, that kid played the whole game, every rep mattered to the offensive line coach Aldo on uh the kid uh Rashad Coward uh, Coward mm -hmm. I wanted to say Cro Croward but yeah, Coward <laughs> I don't know why Rashad Coward played every rep I was just watching him for half the game <laughs> yeah I was so impressed well, with him but don't forget that that dude was a defensive defensive lineman, last lineman. Year. that's what makes exactly you, you can start scratching the surface on a guy like that and, and you know, unearth a gem. Not yeah. saying that it's going to happen, but that's where, I mean, you want to talk about Harry he stand You know, he everybody reps. says he's, he's the best, you know, offensive line coach around or, you know, top three no matter what level, however they rank him. He mm -hmm. sees guys like that. That's why you bring him in here. He, he had very little chance to make this club on the other side of the ball. And you put him, you know, he's a powerful guy, and it did. It caught my eye when you see him as the backup right tackle, granted, on the first depth chart that was released. But, um, you know, that's that's a, a little story that you need to put a, a star next to and, and keep an eye on this kid because, you know, Massey's got a contract that's coming up, and you get this kid a year of experience at right tackle. You know, stranger yeah. things have happened. He could be your Never starting know. right tackle next year. Who knows? Or he's in the game because someone gets hurt, Shane. Yeah. That, that's where you unearth these talent. That's why the, all of them matter. And I know Danny knows that, too. These reps, especially in the interior and, and defensive line and offensive line, you want to see these guys go after it. Who has the passion? I know we're not getting to the defense yet, 
and I kind of talked a little bit because I, I was happy with it, Aldo. But Coward, oh, I'm so excited to see where he puts this tape next week. To have him starting the whole, he played every snap. He was physical, played to the whistle, played with good leverage. Happy about him. Now, to me, you know, there wasn't enough to go on. So if you're going to not play Kevin White, why are you playing Benny Cunningham? Let's <laughs> get some of these assessments. It's just no consistency there. So I'm excited about now. I, I think. You saw, I, I saw what I wanted to see in the kid with the limited opportunities and the, the guard uh, play and some of the other things that are concerning me is going to be there. It was interesting. Nobody's really talking, or maybe they are. I've really just been focused on what, you know, putting clips up and stuff for Bears Barroom. But I thought it was interesting that Cush started out at center tonight. That was pretty interesting well. to me. I and did it exactly well, did a good job so that was a kind of interesting thing just looking back through the first quarter uh with him out there yeah you know i've been a little tough on frank kush i i, I that season what was it 2016 when he came in and there were all sorts of injuries and he had to play up and down the line he did a really good job you know i just didn't feel that coming into the season we should count on him as a starter but Man, every every time he has gone out there as a Chicago Bear, he has played well, and that is really good to see, particularly with James Daniels having a shoulder injury and that we're not being told much about it in typical Chicago Bears fashion. So let's hope we don't have a Kevin White situation here that uh, all of a sudden turns into you know a lost season for our second-round draft pick. All right, guys, it is time to talk about this defense that, you know, in, in, in preparing this uh, 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 Hall of Fame tribute video that I did that you can find on BearsBarroom.com or on our Twitter page at Bears Barroom. I was looking at a highlights of Richard Dent and Dan Hampton and that famous 85 defense just annihilating quarterbacks. Boy, oh boy, there was a period of time during today's game where I, I got a little sense of deja vu with Kylie Fitz and Isaiah Irving and, and the pass pressure that was going on. Okay, I'm exaggerating a little bit. So. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, they had a total of, what was it, seven sacks? And uh, let me turn it over to Shane. What did you think about this pass rush? Well, it's, again... When I talk about the, I always will make down, especially in preseason. I'll before the game, I'll write down things that I'm gonna that I want to see or things that I'll focus on. And I think probably everybody wrote down, you know, pass rush where that's gonna come from. And between Irving and Fitz, you wanted to see them at least. Not saying that they had to, you know, exactly get home, but you wanted to see them apply some um, pressure. And you saw that. I mean, Irving was off sides that one time, but still, he got he got around there. He showed it's it's not so much that he got the the offsides penalty there, but you still saw that burst. I mean, the yeah. kid he just came out of a cannon out of that. And I mean, you got to add Bilal. Bilal Nichols even had a he had a sack oh. tonight. You want to you want to see these young draft picks. You want to see them start to stack these plays together because it's it's confidence these guys you know they went out there and they made a play in an nfl game javon wim's gonna carry over to next week you know kylie fitz even though you know fit fitz got home there the one time a, a couple of other times i thought he looked a little bit sluggish but like i said you don't know exactly what's going on i know he was dealing with an arm injury if he's right you know a hundred percent back with that but Isaiah Irving is a guy that really, really intrigues me because you, you, you put, I put a lot of st uh, stock into what Vic Fangio says when he talks. And he, he was talking about a guy, a guy like Isaiah Irving. They said, you know, what did he show you last year at this time? He's like, you know, not a hell of a lot. But, you know, as time went on, he started to, he started to figure things out. But then he got hurt. And you like to see him build up in the offseason and, my biggest complaint with him, he's got to get rid of that number 47. That drives me crazy. <laughs> See the pass rusher out there. I hate that. Yeah, that looks, doesn't look right. 49 it, it, and 47. Yeah, I, I'm not a big fan of that at all. <laughs> but, um, 
No, he bulked it's not. up too, Shane. He's, he did. He's he did. Thick. Yeah, he's and another strong. one. You know, he's got a Roy Robertson Harris. I mean, you can see the work mm-hmm. that guy put in in the off season. To me, actually, tonight he looked at, he looked like he was a little bit pudgy almost in the belly. I was a little bit surprised really? to see that. And the one it might have just been the one shot, but um, we saw the uh, customary. One or two snaps from Jonathan Bullard where he, he blew up and <laughs> yeah. you know into the backfield, and I said, hey, "Boy, if we could just get any consistency out of that, because it's not that he even needs to get in there and make the play. Just the explosion itself is going to free up other you know lanes right. for people, and you just want to see that consistency there with him. But I think it was a like you said, Aldo. I think it was a great start for this young team, and we, we you know we haven't obviously." Who knows what Aaron Lynch is? Really, who knows what what Leonard Floyd is? These guys are nursing their injuries, but you want to see these young guys go out there. And what's the best thing they can do is make plays. And we saw that. Was it perfect? Absolutely not. But you see Ryan Pace again. Some of these late round gems. He's he's unearthing, bringing in, and they're making plays. Danny. Yeah, um, I touched on I touched on the beginning. Uh, Isaiah Irving was was my player of the game in the first half. Uh, uh, like we said, he was around the ball. Um, his first step quickness, the ability to bend the corner to, to get to the quarterback was uh, was on, was on display. Uh, very impressive. And like Phil and Shane mentioned, he got a little bigger. He's able to shed and and stack at the line of scrimmage to be able to better defend the run. So that that's going to be something to keep an eye on. See if he continues to improve in that area. Kelly Fitz, uh, the one thing about him coming out of Utah was he had that straight line speed. He had a pretty good get off, uh, but he just doesn't have the full pass rush arsenal. He still has to work on his hand usage to be able to swipe and rip, get offensive linemen's hands off his body. Uh, but if he gets that good, that good first step, you know, beats the offensive uh, tackle to his outside shoulder, he can get to the quarterback. Um, and the, and the, the kid, Bilal Nichols, again, uh, impressive physical specimen. The kid has some, for a guy who came from a, from a lower tier school, he's got some technique down already. He's got the swim move down, can get into the backfield, can penetrate real quick. He had a couple of uh, uh, tackles for loss there on, on a couple of run plays. Uh, of course, you know, and then he, you know, he stayed with uh, Lamar Jackson on that uh, half bootleg to the, to the side there and, and took him down for a sack. So, yeah, those three kids uh, really showed out today. Um, as, and on, as we always talked about Javon Wims as well. But uh, on defense, I think those three kids showed out today. Um, and, and Michael Johnson, I think, uh, Phil, you mentioned him earlier, number 21, uh, the corner. I think he had a, he had a pretty good, pretty good uh, game as well on special teams, too. I, I noticed him make a couple tackles as well. So uh, some, some, some of the kids actually made plays today and stood out, which is encouraging. Um, Me. Go ahead, Phil, please. Are you sure? Because I don't want Danny to go into corner safeties and kickers. <laughs> <laughs> I love That's it. That's we were talking about the defensive line. Sorry, just sorry. Busting. You're, I you're on 100 proof, tell. Danny. Yeah, I got to I gotta keep people in line, including the producer. <laughs> um, Roy Robinson Harris, to me, is clearly the specimen and the player that's growing i think i look at bullard i see a guy guessing a lot and to shane's point that's good to disrupt but it's not consistent because it's continuously a guess and that's when he's in when you see him give chase you don't see that kind of same explosive football player that you would do you would see in a Geno atkins or an aaron donald that give chase this guy's content to get across the line of scrimmage. And and to me, he's lived on that kind of hype too much, too often without consistency. When I look at Roy Robb, I see technique, power, effort to the sideline, to the play, to chase down. To me, that is an easy, I would be starting and sending a message to Jonathan Bullard next, uh, on Monday or the next practice on Saturday when Aldo's there. Uh, Roy, in, John, stand over there and, and send that message. Uh, Bilal Nichols, I, again, we're going to temper this, but he was the most impressive defensive football player to me all night. And I'm just 
Danny said it perfectly. Uh, you saw some things, but I think when you're assessing, wow, or, this is an NFL player. Lamar Jackson is a threat. He's a danger. He could take over a football game. They hyped him up on the broadcast. It was like a Ravens broadcast tonight. But the play that Danny was talking about where Jackson gets out into the open is going to cut it back. And there's Nichols in solid technique chasing him down, cutting and giving the no angle that at a player that's technique sound and physical the swims, the hand uses, the power at the point of attack. <laughs> I'm excited about this football player now, Nichols. Keep an eye on him. Again, depth charts are in pencil right now. You get to start playing with the first team, and we'll see what kind of player Bullard is. Is he content to be blocked because Nichols is coming? I thought John Jenkins yep. played a hell of a football game. Uh, great effort in what a nose guard is supposed to do. I put up the playoffs. <laughs> I'm like, who the hell? It's John. Holy. Running down the tight end. They're, what, second or first round picked. Their tight end caught a ball. John's sprinting down the football field and catching the tight end at 325, 330 pound nose guard. These things pop out to me, Al, though. I see technique. I thought he was good there. And, and obviously, these guys talked about Isaiah Irving. Tremendous. Uh, growth in this football player that's exciting so you know there was a lot of good things about the defensive line they're young and, and they came ready to play but i think the rookies as well as undrafted guys like roy rock really showing up what this team could be in the rotation and uh, you got to be excited about it four win talent phil <laughs> <laughs> all right let's talk about the back seven and let's try to get this quickly it is eleven forty-five central although not many people are leaving the chat room so maybe we if you guys want to go like to 6 a.m hey you know. no, 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 no. <laughs> sorry guys <laughs> no, work. all right so let's talk about the back seven shane what'd you think about the linebacker play tonight well it's the you know Everybody's disappointed, obviously. You see them pop up Roquan on there, and you knew that he's sitting back in Georgia, you know, eating a steak and trying to figure all this bullshit out why he's not here. But it's steak and whiskey. Yeah, steak and whiskey. Yeah, exactly. But, um, no, th this was a game tonight. Realistically, if, if Danny Trevathan and, and Roquan were both here, that you would have saw a guy like Nick Kwiatkowski shine in, you know, being that that third guy. I was really disappointed because you want to see that continued growth with him. But you're talking about you want just just the linebackers. You said Aldo. Is that what yeah. you said? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So I mean, there wasn't. I was focused on the 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 outside guys a lot. John. I mean, in, in terms of the inside guys, John Timo. Or Timu, he he's still the same guy to me. He he misses so many yep. tackles. I mean, he had one in the back. He had he could have had a sack in the backfield, and he just and I think I tweeted out, you know, John Timu's still leading the uh, world in missed tackles. He was he was all alone. He had it, and just he totally whiffed. You see that so many times, and then he'll turn around and, and make a great play, and he'll get you a little bit more right. more excited, but. Um, you know, other than that, I, neither one of them, him or James Anderson, didn't really stand out to me too much. I was kind of excited to see uh, 55. I want. I thought maybe he would flash a little bit more with his athleticism. You know, he's that hybrid. He played uh, safety linebacker, you know, at Maryland. Uh, I didn't see too much of him that uh, made me, you know, get too excited tonight. But um like we already talked on on the guys on the edge, just with you know Fitz and more so with Irving. I I, I just want to see these guys make plays at this point and and get after the quarterback, and that's what that's what got those uh, juices flowing for me more than anything. Not saying that they played fantastic, you know, throughout the whole game because like Danny alluded to it, you could see 
the things that made, you know, that pushed fit, not just the injury history, but you could see the things that uh, pushed Fitz down in the draft. You know, if he just doesn't have that straight line to the quarterback, he can do that. But um, overall, like I said, I was just most excited about the outside guys. I saw a lot more of the same from John Timu, and it just, it, it would make me more motivated if I'm Ryan Pace to get this stuff wrapped up with Roquan and to get Danny Trevathan uh, back healthy. And, you know, because like I said, if these guys aren't in there, then you're, you're really sitting Nick Kwiatkowski out because he's, he's going to be your main guy heading into uh, week one if, if, if nothing changes. A bear up, a bear down. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, Phil, any thoughts on the backers that you want to share that uh, uh, Shane did not touch on? Uh, that would be my bear down tonight. Yeah. It shows you what kind of lack of talent you have back there because Shane's right. For every one play Timo does really well, he'll he'll give you two bad. So he's just a special teams guy that relies on instincts and you know, you would hope to, yeah, I would have hoped this is his third or fourth, how, third year, right, Shane? So you would hope that you're yep. working so hard in plyometrics and explosive uh, practices to get your body and your hips to to be what he is and agile. And if he put in that work, I think you'd, he'd be such a better football player, but He's just a guy, and Anderson will give you the same thing, a couple wild plays because he's so he's very, very quick. He's a fast linebacker, but he's just – he gets caught up, and he doesn't make a play in coverage, and then he misses another tackle. So that position to me tonight, Aldo, is what Shane said you're a little concerned about, and – it shows where you are at that position, and I think you hit it out of the park, Shane. If it was Kwiatkowski, you'd get more consistency, I think, overall. They would help the other backer inside as well to have somebody, but they were both that kind of way, Aldo, just all over the place and inconsistent. Steven Zim Zimmerman, SZ Square, I'm going to nickname you, says that Timo played exactly like we expected, always near the ball, never making a play. <laughs> Danny, you got any thoughts on the backers at all before we move to the back four? No, I'm pretty much echoing what uh, Phil and Shane had said. You know, uh, not much there right now. Um, obviously, Quick Cosby didn't play, and, and also the, the rookie. Uh, I'm not even going to try and pronounce his last name. I'm just going to call him Iggy, the, the kid out of kid out of Western Kentucky. Oh. Uh, he didn't play at all tonight either. So please get healthy. Um, we got a really cool song that we want to take. Yeah, we're Come waiting on. for you to make a play <laughs> so we can press. So Aldo can press play. Oh, I'm, dying, I'm dying to share that song. One of Phil's better works, and that's saying a lot because I love Phil Atosian's music. I'm sorry, Shane. I just feel that way. <laughs> um, let me uh, let let's turn over to the defensive backs. Uh, Danny, is Marcus Cooper going to make this football team? Oh, uh, Marcus Cooper, man, uh, poor guy. I, I felt bad for him out there today. He was, he was struggling against some, some guys mm -hmm. like we said earlier are not going to be in the NFL this season. So, uh, I don't know. That's a good question. I mean, the, the kid, Michael Joseph, like I mentioned earlier, uh, he, he kind of, uh, stood out a little bit on a couple plays, both on defense and on special teams. Um, and the, the corner grant obviously, you know, made that interception, uh, played the ball, uh, you know, drove on it, picked it off, took it away from the receiver, that was a nice play, and um, so it's a good question. I, I don't know. I mean, I, his his money is not guaranteed. I don't think this year, right? Guys no, he enough. he took a big he took a yeah. big haircut. I think he's in all sorts of trouble. I don't think yeah. he makes this fifty three. Yeah, this gonna be, it's gonna be tough for him to make this fifty three. Too bad. It seems like this guy's career just went downhill once he uh, flubbed that, that play where he <laughs> dropped the ball. I mean, because oh he was God. playing well before he that. Started. And, he had, and he had a good uh, 2016 season. So it, it was well, just Well, let's sad. see what he does next week. I, He's got time. I always say this. You got to come back with, you know, your boy Colin Thompson. You got to 
come back this week in practice. Mm-hmm. And uh, Nagy said it to a reporter before the preseason started. I wanted to bring it up on uh, before our training camp show began, and I forgot. But he said, you know, it's the guys that take what they learned in the film mm-hmm. room and they apply it on the football field. It's the guy that made the mistake one time and then corrects it the next time, that those are the guys that stand out to me. That's coach speak. To your point in the beginning, Aldo, it was refreshing because he was very straightforward with his thoughts. We might not agree with everything, but I'm happy that he handled the competition to try to win, to go for two, and put it on the team and make that a lesson. Everything he did really well except for what we talked about at the top, and I thought his transparency was great. Uh, the back end, you know, of these defensive backs is, is going to be telling. And Cooper, you know, he didn't have a good night. It was very evident. He was thinking. So let's see how he comes back. Let's see how all these guys come back. Yeah, it's going to hurt him next week because you're going to get the – I'm blanking on the kid's name, the kid from LSU – that one Tolliver, undrafted. Tolliver. Yeah, Tolliver. Tolliver. You're gonna get you're gonna get a kid like that hopefully back mm-hmm. you know, next week, and it's gonna. And I said you, you're talking about these young defensive backs, not to go back to the offensive side of the ball, but okay. if they like these young defensive backs, you, you you wonder when you're talking about Joseph and 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 Tolliver and and these guys, are you gonna get enough of these guys where they may push a guy like Josh Bellamy off the roster? For a special teams prowess, you know, you know that's just something. It's going to be interesting to see how these roster spots. It's true, because Vic could be in there fighting, saying, right. "What are you talking about? We need corners here to run that, this defense the way we want to run it." And a couple of guys, a couple of veterans, DeAndre Hall, I thought played yeah. play well. Oh today. yeah, and I think I think he was, he was on my list. Safety. On my list, he was I, Danny. Yeah, yeah, he, he was, was playing, playing safety. safety. So Phil yeah. was right, Shane. Just for yeah. the bloggers, I, I just want to make sure <laughs> and, hey, and clear let, that up when I speculated. Let's, <laughs> let's not forget the hit of the night, which I thought was the hit oh, of the night. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Yep. Dion Bush. Yeah, Craven for, LeBlanc had a couple nice plays Craven as well. LeBlanc. He did. Yep. that's my boy. Yeah. yeah, Craven had that one down inside the ten yard line. Uh, yep. Came flying up. Yeah, he did. Stopped it right at the. Right at the line of scrimmage, yeah, I was. I said, uh, "Note for tonight, safety position." I feel pretty good at the kid or that I was excited about. That was yeah. a terrible call. Yeah, that was awful. I know Lewis Riddick was fired up about it. What did you guys, What did you guys think about the the? Uh, DeAndre Houston Carson interception. I thought that that ball. I thought it was going to. I go. Hit, we're never hit the ground. This call. Yeah, I thought uh, it was clear as all hell. I, I thought it was a drop. Yep. Yep. Me too. I, but again, I mean, at least he was he was around the ball. You, you know, the difference tonight was, you know, last year and and the, even the previous two years, the balls that were tipped. It seemed like the Bears had somebody there this year, and that's how this all works. Exactly. When you're talking about the lack of interceptions. They, you know, they, they come in waves like that. And maybe this is the year you see that change because I said just you, you saw a couple tip passes and there were people there this year. And that's, Plus you know, another year yeah. in the system. It, that, exactly. that all helps. That's all Who I was, was say, saying that, Ryan, system. Was it Ryan Heckman or one, one of our guests was talking about you could hear them preaching. I think Aldo even said it. Get to the football. Hustle yeah. to the football every second. Everyone's got to sprint. That stuff matters, Shane. It does. Yeah, absolutely. Getting to the football and making it second nature to the team. Uh, I saw a faster team out there. Again, we understand that it's the first scrimmage. On both ways, you play this. The, the nervousness as well as the hype. But first reaction without watching the tape, although I watched – a lot more, and I was behind everybody because I kept filming stuff, was a very positive one. And it was one with which, like we talked about, that a lot of these guys stood out. But the secondary, to me, was something as, I'm sorry, Danny, I cut you off, reassessing Shane, that this is the second year in this for them. But uh, Hall, 
uh, Bush. I, I really am trying to think of a negative play. The kid, you could not play that play any better than Gant made that play. Uh, Grant, rather, yeah, from Ohio Dorian State. Grant. Dorian, Dorian Grant. Grant, yeah. Dorian you Grant. Can't, I mean, to settle eyes on quarterback through the receiver, know the route, jump it, and attack the football. That's a, a rep, Shane, yeah. that he learned, and now he could build off that. So when I say build off, you keep playing at that level. So Nichols is going to be someone we got to watch next week. Cush yeah. at center. Coward. Cool. Grant wow. is really an interesting guy to me Who's because that? he's Grant that you were talking about, Dorian yeah. Grant, the kid. He he's he got is. everything that you want, and I mean, I think the he came. I think they picked him up off the scrap heap from the Jackson. Yeah, he was like right. a, a, a late yeah, Jacksonville company. end of yeah. the year signing. Yeah, and you you see guys like that. There's always guys every year that you get. You know, you'll pick up and put on your practice squad at the end of the season or in the off season ninety Fabulous. man roster, and they. It takes them a year or two to, to, to click. And, you know, guy. I mean, you see Seattle lived and, and thrived off players mm-hmm. like that. You know, these UDFA type guys or guys that were cut. And they, One and they year. Get them, get them into a, a system where they're comfortable and, they, and you give them a chance. And, you know, he, he went out and made a play tonight. And that's it's guys like that that where I think I don't think to me there's no question. I don't think. Marcus Cooper is going to make this roster. I think there's just too much young uh, defensive back talent on this roster that they're going to want to move forward with and, and, and even stash a couple of these young guys on the, on the practice squad if they can get them down there. And I, To me, I think it's going to push a veteran like Marcus Cooper off the roster. Yeah, right. Good point. I agree. All right, fellas, we're going to go around the table for closing thoughts. I'm going to sneak in the closing music. Let's keep our closing thoughts to, I don't know, 30, 60 seconds because the mail must go through. Uh, Phil has got to cure the social <laughs> ills of the people of Connecticut. And Danny, <laughs> Danny, I don't know. What, what are you going to do tomorrow, Danny? He's going to ring Bill Walsh. I got to work. <laughs> <laughs> That's, I, I'm still on page two. <laughs> <laughs> the table of contents on that book is really, really long. <laughs> It's deep. It's deep. All right, uh, Danny, let me begin with you. What final thoughts do you have about this first game coached by Matt Nagy of the Chicago Bears? Anything you want to share with us regarding player evaluation or just overall thoughts on the team? Overall, I think it was a, a positive first step. Uh, like I said, Coach Nagy looked like he was confident, uh, had, had the uh, – the coach the thing down pat, you know, didn't call any dumb timeouts, didn't, you know, go for any stupid challenges or anything like that. Uh, had the, the, the play in, plenty of time for the quarterback to go ahead and, and scan the defense. Um, so that was good. Some some young guys, the, the rookie class uh, made a early positive impression. And we still have to see Roquan Smith, Anthony Miller, you know, James Daniels and, and the other guys, you know, to uh, play as well. So overall, positive first step. Um, saw some things on offense today that, that I haven't seen around these parts for a while. You know, we, we saw a, a three-trip uh, uh, stack to the right with three tight ends, mm. which I haven't seen that done uh, in a previous uh, offensive regime. So, um, so it's, it's po- overall positive step and looking forward to next week. Excellent. Shane, the smartest man in the bar room, Marsaw, give us some of that knowledge. It, it, I can't really add too much uh, to what Danny said. It's just, you know, like I, I touched on it before. I, I wanted Nagy to be decisive and didn't want to see any communication errors. And it's to me, it's all about these young guys stacking talent. I saw what I wanted to see from Irving, from Fitz, from, uh, Bilal Nichols. Like I said, it, it's not so much about their overall game. You want to see them go out there and make some plays get that confidence to move forward and now the most important game is just like Danny said it's it's next week we're going to we're going to see Mitch in there we're going to see Jordan Howard probably get a uh, you know maybe a carry or two and we're going to see Tariq Cohen uh, Kevin White yeah Kevin yeah, maybe <laughs> maybe Danny we gotta, we gotta oh, put him in, whoa, 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 hold up maybe <laughs> maybe we'll see but uh, you know Trey Burton we're going to see the guys, these big money guys and these, you know, high upside guys out there. So 
that's really what I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to now. And I'm going to refer back to this list that I made tonight. You want to see Javon Wims take that next jump. You, you know, Isaiah Irving, you want to see Dion Bush go out there and make a, make a play next week. Deandre Houston Carson, all these young guys that Ryan Pace has brought in. We'll just want to see these guys continue to make plays get that confidence up because once that momentum starts going and rolling downhill i mean we may win five games and mike north's gonna go crazy and, and who knows you know four win talent so we'll, we'll see what happens <laughs> phil uh before you give us your closing thought i gotta tell you that there's some activity in the chat room there's guys flirting with one another and oh boy. as uh, Steven Zimmerman says, hey, man, it's 2018. It's cool if it's all in a gay way, too. What the hell do you think I'm supposed to do, Aldo? BG's sleeping. I'm lonely. <laughs> <laughs> uh, go ahead, Phil. <laughs> well, it's the start of football season. We have Bears football back. And these guys really covered what it is. I want to you know, push back a little on Chase Daniels and, and see him with more, you know, reps and have him go out there and play after Trubisky and the right way to handle this with talent. I don't think it's time to panic, so to speak, with him. And, and we really hit on everything. So the only thing that remind me of tonight that got me down was the broadcast. I mean, Chris Collinsworth just took me from can't wait to see football to can't wait to mute this because <laughs> it was just hard. I mean, when Tony, add Tony Dungy in there and, and granted Tony had some great things to say about the Bears, but wow, it was hard to listen to and, and, and go through it. So. They're in preseason form, I hope, as well, Alto, because it was hard to watch the narrative spinning and all that stuff. So it's back, think- though. I'm excited. I think we're going to build off this, and we'll be back to talk about it all next week. Go ahead, Danny. You had a thought? Uh, yeah, I actually did mute it when I kept hearing that the, the punter, uh, Vedvik, was Norwegian. I'm like, yeah. every time. The Norwegian, the Norwegian punter. punter. I'm like, okay, we know that. You know. oh. How did the punting competition go? Was there any numbers there? Because at least we have a punting competition. That should be a segment. We do. It we do. Yeah. That's, yeah. That, that, yeah. <laughs> well, it's, they made it's it simple. known. Tabor said no. Tabor we did. Yeah. Competition. Yeah. Yeah. Did. They asked him how it was coming. He said it's still ongoing. O'Donnell had four punts tonight uh, for a total of 228 yards, a 57.0 average, one touchback. One uh, landed inside the 20. His longest was 59 yards. And then Ryan Winslow had one punt. He hit it 50 yards. And so we'll see if he gets more of an opportunity, Winslow does, in this next game. And then I will believe, Tabor, that there is a punting competition. Pat O'Donnell has a, I think it's a fully guaranteed one point something million dollar contract. 1.5, I think. 1.5. So, and, 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 you know, management loves this guy. He's, he's, you know, a cover boy for punting galore magazine uh, <laughs> and uh you know he's this great athlete and stuff he, this guy should be ray guy but yeah he, he just con- continually disappoints a, a good way to, to know if there's actually a competition if you see winslow holding for pats oh right yeah. good yep. point. very good point i want to read a couple of the thoughts that were shared in the chat room and lots of great activity in the chat room i just pulled just a few Ryan Kirkland Billings, when you guys were talking about Javon Wims, he wrote Javon (coughs) Alshon Wims. Nice thought there, (laughs) Billings. I wouldn't quite compare the two of them, but I I see where you're going there. Stacey Hefner is upset, she says, like she has said before, that... It, and it needs to be mentioned again that this new helmet rule is Satan shifting oh, onto yeah. the league. It's just bringing so much uncertainty. And Ryan D'Onofrio followed that by saying, I'm about to stop watching the NFL and go full NHL with some NBA if these rules keep up like that. So I understand the frustration. And I think, uh, uh, Phil, for Bears Hour Live next Monday, I think that's 
could be your opening rant is to talk about this rule again, or it certainly has to be a segment on your show. Uh, Absolutely. Steven Zim Zimmerman, man, he was bringing it with lots of outstanding comments. He mentioned that that interception by Duran Grant, he, him jumping that route, that it reminded him that he hadn't seen it. Something like that uh, from a Bears DB since Craven LeBlanc did it against Detroit two years ago. And I have to agree. I don't think I've seen that either. I, I've seen uh, Kyle Fuller try to do it, but he didn't come up with the ball. Um, <laughs> and uh, Gibby07 says that she, uh, Gibby, I'm not sure if that's a man or a woman. So I'm going to say Gibby says that uh, she's a man, baby. She's a man. (laughs) (laughs) Is betting a case of beer that Marcus Cooper is making this team? I don't know. You might get a lot of takers on that. A lot of takers. I'm not giving up on Coop. Yeah, I want to see him next week. Hey. There's the one Cooper family um, uh, fan club. Again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there you go. That's hey, what a good time, man. We got Bears football. I'll tell you something. When that broadcast started and I saw the Chicago Bears uniforms, I just it, yeah. I felt like my heart was melting. I was so oh, fired yeah, yeah, yeah. up. And you can say that the game was sloppy and that the play calling was vanilla and this and that. But I enjoyed every second of that football game. And I can't can't wait for the next game but in between games you've got bears barroom radio with podcasts you got bearsbarroom.com with articles you got youtube over at the bears barroom channel with videos you've got all sorts of good stuff and a lot of great stuff coming with the new edition mike north Oh, my God. It's just good to be a bear f- barroom barfly. Tell your friends. Give us good reviews on iTunes. Just g- go around, print a T-shirt, and say, I love Bears Barroom. Do it yourself because our swag shop just keeps getting pushed back. That's right. Spray, <laughs> spray paint it on cars where you live in your city. doesn't matter. Get the message Tag out Tag up the local Taco Bell for Mickey Kurtz. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Aldo, yes. you're going to be out at camp this I weekend. Am, I am. I'm going to so be out there. We've got is a- Bears girl. That's why she's not here tonight. That's right. She's getting so, her sleep. She's going to jump yep. on a plane early in the morning. And on Saturday and Sunday, we'll be out at Bears camp. It's going to be great. So if you're out there, look for us. We'll be tweeting about where where we're seated and where we're going to go after. On Saturday, we're going to get together for some drinks. And so I'm, there buying, you go. I'm buying the first round. So join us. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Join us. <laughs> I broke the piggy back. My daughter's uh, piggy bank in her room. I went in there, broke it, so I got enough <laughs> around the drinks. Took Listen. her college funds. <laughs> <laughs> Remember, she was it. going to Iowa. She's going to <laughs> Marquette <right>. next week. <laughs> <laughs> She's going to Southern nowhere. Illinois for you. <laughs> Uh, she's going to know where a state is where she's going. <laughs> Remember, if you drink, please, please, please share it with me and do not drive and always bear down. Sit down, Kevin. <laughs> How about Nagy's hat? Wore the old ball coach cap. Yeah, he had a nice tan. He looked good on the sidelines. Yeah, he had his bald head through through the hat. What do we call it? Visor? Visor. Visor. Yeah, Yeah, he's a a visor guy. He's a visor. Speaking of bald head, I I wish Arlecca was still bald. Yeah, oh, so do I. I don't understand. Yeah, he doesn't. He doesn't he look great. He didn't look bad tonight. He didn't look bad. That was an, a, a, a money decision, that, and that's all. Yeah, that was. he's just every time he's on TV, he's collecting a couple dollars. <laughs> 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 look at my hair. Hey, there was a comment from Airdrie that I forgot to share. He says that uh, Burton playing today means that his job is not safe. That's what he took no away from way. it. A- anybody oh else uh, agree? Or, uh, tell me quickly, you agree or disagree nope. with that? I can't I see how he makes it roster. I can't, I, can't see it. I can't even think of how he makes it on the field tomorrow. <laughs> I, I don't get it. 
<laughs> made a nice catch. Matt Nagy kind of alluded to it in one of his recent pressers. He, yeah. He just kind of swept it under the rug a little bit. He was talking about Mike Burton. He praised him a little bit. And then he started talking about Ryan Nall. And he goes, there's <laughs> going to be some really interesting uh, roster decisions. Decisions. Yeah. yeah. So. All right, no. guys. The bed awaits me. And I know it awaits you guys, too, because you got to get up a lot earlier than I do. So great job. Thank you, everybody in the chat room. Good night. And we'll uh, talk to you soon. Good night, later. Good night, guys. Good night. All right, guys. Yeah, yeah. Good night, bar flies. Hey, real quick, real quick. I'm kidding. Real I'm quick. Kidding. Real quick. <laughs> <laughs> Good job, everybody. Good night. Bye.